With the emergence of small independent streetwear startup brands in 2021, the bootleg craze overtook the world of fashion again, or rather, the streetwear world. Leading its way, brands like Fugazi, Ore NYC, Warren Lotus, etc. took initiative to bring back the bootleg era of sneakers. Popular models from Nike were revamped to fit each brand's identity, providing a strong brand personality while riding the popularity of the original sneaker. These bootleg creations took off and took over the streetwear market. However, the success did not necessarily prevail in the voice of the public. Feedbacks from the peers were rather mixed, as the controversies peaked to a new height. With A-list celebrities from Drake to J-Lo rocking the revamped bootleg Nike sneakers. But surely, they can't just straight up copy Nike, right? So, how do they keep getting away with it? As explained by fashion lawyer Julie Zerbo, if you have an idea to make a dress with a specific print, the law may protect aspects of the actual piece you see on the runway, but it doesn't protect the general idea. Copyright law also doesn't protect useful articles because it doesn't want to grant a monopoly on things that are useful. Let's say you come up with an original floor print and you put it on a dress. That print is protectable, but no other aspects of the dress. This is because dresses are inherently useful. Let's say you come up with an original sleeve design. Under copyright law in the United States, because more or less everything that you use to cover your body is considered to be useful, you can only protect that original creative element of the shirt, the sleeves. In this case, the pattern of an original sneaker can also be trademarked. So, as long as an original invention has been trademarked by a company, you can't reinvent it for commercial use, right? Well there might just be a way. According to the New York Law Journal, a trademark parody must convey two simultaneous and contrary messages. That it is the original, but also it is not the original and is instead a parody. When a parody must call to mind the actual product to be successful, the same success also necessarily distinguish the parody from the original product. Does this mean that I can just make whatever knockoff products I want to say as a parody then? Because, well... With big name bootleg brands like Imran Potato, Vandy the Pink, we date back to the time where they first exploded. From the now world class pop star Billie Eilish and Bat Bunny. They utilized luxury brand logos in an ironic manner, exaggerating bright colors or manipulated the sizes of logos often used in the settings of monogram. The brand slowly exploded and carried a bootleg trend back then. In an interview with Hypebeast, fashion lawyer Julie Zerbo mentions, as she saw a few years ago, there's a big thing with brands using others' logos than saying, oh, but it's a parody. And courts are really split on that. What is a parody as opposed to a trademark infringement? There isn't a bright line answer other than that you can't use other brands name or logo without authorization in a way that might confuse the consumers. Indeed, there is an underlying gray line defining whether the usage of an existing design is trademark infringement. With the likes of those bootleg brands taking the streetwear world by storm, I would imagine those original brands aren't going to be too happy with them. The WWD's definition of knockoffs is a product that resembles another item but isn't exactly identical, can be found online and in stores, often at a reputable retailers or brands, usually at a cheaper price than the original item that inspired them. Not illegal, but can be challenged in court by the brand that inspired the design. In other words, they aren't illegal unless a brand can prove that the resemblance is so close that the customer is misled. Well, without context, a sweatshirt with LV monograms all over it seems a lot like LV to me. Doesn't really matter the size of them. With that definition in mind, the fashion law mentions, interestingly, the fact that the brands have not yet called foul by way of litigation is not necessarily because they lack the basis to do so. In fact, potential legal grounds abound. For example, when the textiles at issue are outright fake, such as the ones used by Imran Potato, 
counterfeiting claims are available to the trademark rights holders. So, even though they're entirely able to file a lawsuit against them, why don't they? My, my dear little Gabriel. Well, it really depends on the original brands. When Vetmon was at the peak of his hype, Vet Memes, a meme page that emerged on Instagram, released a series of Vetmon bootlegs back in 2017, where they sarcastically copied every detail of Vetmon's design and only replaced the name, selling them at a fraction of the price in order to poke fun at Vetmon. Although they're entirely eligible to be sued, Demna decided not to, understanding the humor and sarcasm behind the bootleg brand. There are suggestions that brands will also approach those bootleggers personally to resolve the issue in order to avoid trouble in court. Well, because it costs a lot of money. As we look through those recent releases, Imran has avoided using big logos from luxury brands as well as Vandy focusing on their new IP of Vandy Burger in order to avoid troubles from the court. Looking back at the recent resurgence of the sneaker bootlegging trend, the biggest story will probably be Nike's lawsuit against Warren Lotus. <laughs> Got <he. laughs> Got <he. laughs> According to Riley Jones, in court documents obtained by Complex, Nike argues that Lotus lookalike footwear is causing confusion in the marketplace by using the dunk name and a logo comparable to the Swish. With a lawsuit, Nike says it hopes to protect its intellectual property and clarify any question regarding the legitimacy of Lotus designs. The brand claims that its shoes is not customs and are nothing more than illegal fakes. As we all know, Nike subsequently won the lawsuit. Well, for obvious reasons. The biggest indicator that allowed Nike to sue Warren is the resemblance of the sneakers to the original. From silhouette to colorway and finally the indisputable logo. For consumers, when they see those elements put together, regardless whether the sneaker has a swoosh on it, they see it and they can link it to one single source, says Julie Zerbel, founder of The Fashion Law. That one single source being Nike. While I can't say if it's good or bad news for Lotus, his sneakers aren't the only bootlegs that's been sued by Nike. Infamous bootleg sneakers like the Rick Owen Dunks and the Ari Menthol Tins has also experienced similar obstacles. Funny enough, the usage of the silhouette wasn't the biggest of Nike's concern. With the case of the Ari Mento 10s, according to Brendan Dunn from Complex, Nike wasn't even that concerned with Foreman taking his recognizable Air Force One silhouette, but more with his mutilation of his logo. And the same applies to the Rick Owens Dunks. Not everyone modifying Nike's products and making serious money from it has been subject to lawsuits. Nike's claim against Lotus makes it clear that it finds some of those alterations acceptable. It makes a point to differentiate the Warren Lotus shoes, which are not produced in Nike factories, from legitimate customizations. Well, at least we know where Warren Lotus really messed up. Looking at the other Boulay sneakers that aren't being sued by Nike and are making banks, you may think... Isn't it a little unfair for Warren? Well, you just have to be smarter sometimes. Bape, notoriously known for stealing the silhouette of the Air Force One, or Uptowns, for his Bape's shoe. While entirely copying the silhouette, they've drastically changed the logo to avoid legal problems. As to the silhouette itself, they've waited 20 years for the patent law on the shoes to expire, so it became entirely legal for them to do so. Of course, Nike can still sue them for false designation of origin and unfair competition because of its similarity to the Air Force Ones, and thus the subtle changes to the silhouette by Bape throughout the years. Although the mass majority of the bootleg trend successfully survived the enormous palms of Nike, recently Nike officially put an end to this huge production of bootleg sneakers. They've trademarked several of their most popular silhouettes, including the Air Jordan 1s. We might just have to wait 20 more years for the next wave of Jordan 1 bootlegs. Or you can look through the database of Nike's patented silhouettes. Maybe you can just find the next best thing to bootleg. As 
always, thank you for sticking through the length of this video. Comment your opinions on the bootleg trend. Have Nike officially ended the craze or are they here to stay? What is your favorite bootleg sneakers from the recent trends? I can't wait to discuss with you in the comment section below. As always, follow me on Instagram at RayWearsClothes and subscribe to the channel. I'll see you next time, my fellow warriors.